Thanks, Carissa. Thanks, Carissa, for helping to raise the energy early in the morning. Um, good morning, colleagues and uh, industry partners. Thank you for taking time to join us today in our inaugural industry engagement event. I hope the short video has generated some excitement on how we can work together better. The key message today is that our achievements would not have been possible without collaboration with all of you. And together, we can collaborate better to achieve even better outcomes. We have deliberately rebranded this event from uh, industry briefing to industry engagement to reflect a two-way conversation. Industry briefing implies a one-way download and all you have to do, all you have to do is just listen and take in requirements. And that's not what we want. We want to engage you, share our achievements, priorities, and challenges with you. And we hope that you also share with us how you can work better with us to create the impact for Singapore. So over the years, a close collaboration and strong partnership with all of you here have enabled GovTech to drive impactful digital transformation efforts within the public service. The government has put in much effort to ensure progress in our smart nation journey, to ensure that our people have the foundational digital knowledge. We have put in 90,000 of our officers through the data science and AI literacy programs. To ensure that we take advantage of the cloud, we have targeted to move at least 70% of our cloud eligible systems to the cloud. Today, we have 79% of such systems successfully transitioned to the cloud leading to benefits such as operational flexibility and improved system resilience. We are putting efforts to drive more than 30 digital transformation projects, some of which have ended up in products such as birth registration, school registration, or parking SG, which benefit all our citizens. But effort alone is insufficient. We also need to measure outcomes. I'm happy to say that 99% of our government transactions can now be completed end-to-end. -end. And in terms of satisfaction, uh, our citizens and businesses are more satisfied compared to before uh, with a level of 83% compared to 73% and 64% respectively. So these figures are not just numbers. We actually have real improvements in the quality of life for our citizens. All of us who have benefited from CDC vouchers and this enabled by Redeem, a product of OGP. Go Wear is a product where we go to get our masks and vaccines during COVID. Now we use Go Wear when you're hungry to look for budget meals using budget meals Go Wear. Many of us parents who also have used Parents Gateway to provide consent for our children's activities. So no more signing of consent forms. And at last count, there were 400,000 parents and more than 300 schools that have been onboarded to Parents Gateway. And last but not least, there is a Gather SG, which has been instrumental in improving services for our senior citizens and caregivers. We would like to thank Ufinity, Cognizant, Science Tech, and Palo for your partnership in developing all these important applications with us. Now, we don't just develop products. We must also ensure that we keep up with the advance of technology and equip our officers with the right skill sets. To that end, the AI trailblazers have been a very important initiative. Uh, thanks to Google for that. Google provided the compute and tech resources to enable government officers to experiment using AI to solve problems in their agencies. And to date, more than 16 government-sponsored teams have been funded and many have turned their experiments into minimum viable products. More recently, we have developed the Launch Innovation Program. We partner with Microsoft, AWS, and Databricks to support agencies in their innovation journeys. The platform allows agencies to run their own ideatons and hackathons. And to date, we have collected more than 500 innovative ideas and have an average of three to 4,000 users on Launchpad. So we think we have made good progress, but it's insufficient if we only we say that we are good. And actually, other countries have recognized that we have made good progress too. And on the screen is a list of some international accolades uh, that shows that we are recognized for the good progress that we have made in our digitalization agenda. Now, even though we have done well till now, we cannot be complacent. 
the tech environment is extremely dynamic. Tech companies have failed and become obsolete because they failed to keep up. We must work hard to keep up and be very vigilant about the challenges ahead and be prepared for what's to come. We have identified four key areas that we should watch out for. They are ensuring costs continue to be sustainable, ensuring the resilience of our systems, ensuring our systems remain secure, and modernizing our legacy systems. First, keeping costs sustainable. There are many demands to develop more digital services and to keep them updated. There will be also be increasing demands to keep systems resilient and more secure. And such additional measures to ensure backups are available and more comprehensive monitoring and more investment in better cybersecurity would likely lead to increased costs. We estimate that 3.3 billion will be channeled into government ICT developments for this fiscal year. About 2.1 billion could be invested to ensure that our digital infrastructure are resilient, secure, and sustainable. While 1.2 billion could be invested to create user-centric services to enhance effective delivery of public services. Expected spending remains high, and we will need to ensure that costs do not escalate in coming years. On system resilience, we have seen how many large systems have had, had significant disruptions in the past one year. This include cloud service providers, bank services, data centers, and even fast food companies. We cannot believe that our systems are immune to such disruptions. Many of our products are reliant on different digital components that are spread throughout the world. This can include the use of cloud, data centers owned by other parties, or calling on APIs provided by other services. Any disruption or misconfiguration in any of these components can lead to a disruption of our digital services. We will need to ensure comprehensive monitoring of the health of our services and ensure that the services can be recovered quickly should a disruption occur. System security. We have similarly seen a large number of security incidents in the last one year. This include DDoS attacks, and ransomware incidents. Now, if you have read the Cybersecurity Threat Landscape Report by Ensign, you have, read, you have seen a long list of APTs and ransomware actors that could be potentially targeting our systems. At the same time, we have seen that network devices of reputable security software companies are being targeted by actors. They have found numerous vulnerabilities in some of these products. And if even reputable security companies with a high level of security expertise can be targeted, our system cannot be impenetrable. And with the advent of AI, it will be a matter of time before exploitations becomes even more automated. So we have to be much more vigilant, much more timely in patching our systems. And we have to actively monitor our systems for signs of compromise. As we build new systems, we must also remember that there are many legacy systems that were built on older technologies. They could have end-of-life components and likely have huge technical debt from years of accumulation. While these systems might work now, they lack the operational flexibility and there could be a shortage of professionals who can maintain and update these systems. We will need to modernize these systems before they become unusable or too expensive to maintain. So, even as we face these challenges, we need to continue building impactful government digital products. Our products must be cheaper, faster to build, and better in terms of user experience. So, we're very greedy, right? We IP, IT, IKIN, okay? <laughs> it must be cheaper, or we will not be able to satisfy the high demand. It must be faster, or we will not meet our requirements. And it must be of high quality, to ensure we continue to solve the problems and not have systems that are insecure, unreliable, or cause bad user experience. Our services need to be up all the time. The links must be working, and it also must be accessible to people with disabilities. So how do we deal with the key challenges and yet be able to build products cheaper, better, and faster? We have a few ideas, and we hope to hear yours too. First, we want to encourage the use of more reusable components to minimize duplication and wastage. The GovTech has some initiatives along these lines. We have the Government Commercial Cloud 
and we say that 79% of our cloud eligible systems have been onboarded. With the onboarding, the system will subscribe to a common security standard, and this allows us to expand less effort in securing, securing our applications. Secondly, we have built our SG tech stack. By onboarding onto the SG tech stack, there is no need to build our own CI CD. At the same time, you get access to standard development tools and environments and the accompanying monitoring functions. And in future, you'll probably have code assist functions as well. Our service layer also provides useful auxiliary services such as analytics, data science, and digital identity. Being part of the ecosystem, your developer will get access to shared codes and standards across the whole of government. And the good news is that uh, agencies are seeing the benefits and are increasingly onboarding onto the SG tech stack. We also need to build stronger defense for our government systems. Our team is currently working on enhancing our GCSOC. We are want to ensure that our GCSOC will have access to the most updated threat intelligence and be able to detect suspicious behaviors and authorize system changes in the network. Besides ensuring that we have good detection capabilities, we must also ensure that our systems are secure by design. We have thus built our Cloudscape and Codescape to ensure that our code are secure and compliant with our security policy. Uh, incidentally, we are also moving from a perimeter network defense kind of architecture to a zero trust architecture, and that will happen in the second half of this year. Moving forward, we will also adopt a multi-step approach to modernize our legacy systems. We will encourage agencies to segment large monolithic architectures into smaller manageable components, adopt incremental changes and avoid major system overhauls, and then also encourage quality cloud migrations. As you can see from the graph, uh, we are seeing progress in quality cloud migrations, which are not just a leave and shift. We want to reduce friction in our collaboration with the industry. Even as we modernize our systems, use reusable components and ensure our systems are secure and resilient, we need to review our processes to ensure that they are effective and not add burden unnecessarily. We are currently reviewing our IM8 to create a category for low-risk systems. Such systems will only need to adhere to a lighter set of security policies and we estimate that this review will result in a reduction in controls by 60%. This will benefit more than 1,000 systems, which will then have much reduced uh, audit compliance requirements. Once we have done the review for our low-risk systems, we intend to do one review for the medium and high-risk systems as well. And uh, therefore, medium and high-risk systems in future will also benefit from these reduced control requirements. We also intend to simplify procurement processes to make procurement more faster and more effective. We have recently introduced perpetual and dynamic contracting for selected bulk tenders in Financial Day 24. These are contracts with no end date as long as vendors continue to comply, comply with the terms and conditions. At the same time, we can add new vendors if they qualify for the tender. We also intend to experiment with tender light for ICT contracts. Tender light contracts are applicable to contracts below a certain amount and can enjoy reduced contract clauses. We hope that these changes will reduce friction in our collaboration and allow us to move at a faster pace. And this is necessary for us to be agile in developing solutions to solve problems. While well, we have the mentioned initiatives to overcome the challenges, we can't do this alone. More than 80% of our government systems are developed by or with the industry. In order to be able to execute well, we will need to deepen our engagements to co-develop better solutions. We want to get your feedback on whether the process that we have refined are working as intended. And we hope that you can also share your best practices to uplift the whole digital ecosystem. We need both the government and the industry to have a deep understanding of each other. As government, we need to understand the solutions and be able to customize the technical solutions to suit our needs. And very often, we require the vendor to tweak their solutions so that it fits our purposes. 
Last week, uh, I actually went to the US, uh, attended the RSA exhibition, and used the opportunity to meet with some of the vendors there. Uh, we met many vendors. Um, and in our conversation with them, uh, they have often described us as sophisticated. Uh, and we heard that from multiple vendors. And we were wondering, and initially we were happy, oh, we are seen as sophisticated, which is good. And then after a while, we realized that it's a polite way of saying that we are very demanding. <laughs> and demanding will be, we will continue to want to have the best solutions, uh, demand that maybe some solutions are customized for us because we do have many requirements. We have data sovereignty needs, we have security needs, and we want to ensure that the solutions are customized uh, for our purposes. And it works both ways. The industry needs to understand the government requirements too. And we hope the industry will take one step further to understand the specific domains better. And we want you to be sophisticated in the real sense of the word, not, not demanding. Right? Uh, and this could be in the areas of uh, finance, healthcare, or social. And then by truly understanding the complexities of each domain, can you devise the right solutions that solve the problems? We also encourage you to use the reusable products such as our platforms, our tech stacks, and this will allow you to reap advantages of the service that's already available. I have spoken about our IMA reform and our initiatives to refine procurement processes. Uh, we hope to hear your feedback on that and tell us whether it's working as intended. And uh, we will be also be very happy to hear suggestions from you on how we can continue to refine our processes so that we can work together better. All right, I've shared our ideas on how we might overcome the challenges. I'm sure your industries will have your best practices too. I would encourage you to share that too so that we can take the best approach to project management, product development, and even problem discovery. We will also be most happy to collaborate with you on innovation events such as hackathons and even workshops and seminars to enhance our skills. Together, we hope to uplift the whole digital ecosystem so that we can succeed together. So, you have not been listening and just woken up because it's early in the morning. These are the only three things that you need to remember. We want to deepen engagement so that we can partner well and devise the best solutions to solve the problems. We want to refine the processes for better collaboration and we hope we can mutually share skills and knowledge so that we'll uplift the whole digital ecosystem of Singapore. So this is not just about digitalization for digitalization's sake. By, by working well together, we will have much better chance of solving the right problems and improve the lives of our citizens. The active participation of the industry will make a critical difference. So let's work together to shape the future of our smart nation and make lives better. Thank you. <laughs>